Hey everybody, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about motorcycle geometry today and some of the basics that go along with that. So the first thing that you probably hear people talk about is wheelbase. And all wheelbase is, so you take right in your front axle, draw a line down to the ground, and then in your rear axle, and you draw a line down to the ground. Wheelbase is just the distance in between those two points. So we have our wheel base, and that connects your front and rear axles. And you can make that a little bit longer if you want to reduce things like wheeling or stopping, and you can make it a little bit shorter if you want to increase things like turning ability when you're on a bike that doesn't have a lot of power. So if we have that wheelbase, what we're going to do is we're just going to split this picture right in half. We're going to draw a center line right down the middle. And that's only there for reference. So after we know what the wheelbase is, what we want to know is, well, where's the center of gravity located? Where's the, uh, the mass between the front and rear wheels? And for typical sport bikes, what you're going to find is that that center of mass is actually just a little bit right in front of that 50-50 split. And when you start talking with vehicle dynamics people, well, what they're going to tell you is the distance between where that center of gravity is in your front axle, we're going to call that A, and the distance between where that center of gravity is in your rear axle, we're going to call that B. And now that we know where it's located horizontally, right here, just a little bit forward of the center line, we want to know how far up it is vertically. And this varies from bike to bike, but a good rule of thumb estimate is kind of right below this frame spar, roughly where the motor is. And we're going to draw that in the center of gravity, center of mass, just as this like little BMW looking propeller symbol. So we'll draw a line up to there, and then we'll draw what our total height is there. And you'll see that referred to uh, by the lowercase letter h most of the times. Sometimes you'll see it written as CGH, and that's for center of gravity height. And so all these parameters that we've done so far in purple, that's just for the bike itself. But as you all know, when we have a bike, the rider plays a big role. So I'm going to draw a rider in there. We've got his hips here on the seat, bend for his knees, and a bend for his foot. His torso comes up here over the tank. Nice head, and then the arms come in here. So just knowing a little bit about personal anatomy, we know that the person's center of gravity is located somewhere between their hips and their belly button. Kind of a little bit closer to the belly button for men and a little bit closer to the hips for women. So we're going to take this center of gravity again. We're going to draw in a nice little BMW propeller to, donate, uh, to denote the center of mass of our rider. And then what we want to know really is, well, where's the center of mass of this whole system, of the bike and the rider when we put it together? The way we find that out is we're going to take a, just a straight line connects the center mass of our rider and the center mass of the bike. And then we're going to take a step back for a minute and we're going to make some back of the envelope uh, estimates here. So we know that our rider weighs, uh, in this case we're going to assume about 200 pounds. And I know that not all riders weigh 200 pounds, but just for the sake of argument we're going to say our rider weighs 200 pounds. And a typical sport bike weighs about 400 pounds. So that means we've got, for our total system, a weight of 600 pounds. So you can think about it in thirds, right? 200, 400, 600, that's thirds. So we're going to take and we're going to split our line, our blue line here, connecting our two centers of mass up into thirds. So here's your first third, here's your second third, and here's your last third between your rider center of gravity and the bike center of gravity. Well, we know that the bike weighs more, right? The bike weighs 400 pounds, so that means that the center of gravity is going to be closer to the bike center of gravity than it is the person center of gravity. So we're going to start at our person, and we're going to go two bars over, two-thirds of the way, for two-thirds of the weight of the bike. So we go one, two, and we're going to draw our combined center of mass here. Again, this is getting a little crowded, but we're going to use our little BMW symbol for combined center of mass. And one thing that should stand out to you right away, and granted this is just a paper drawing, but our center of gravity is now sitting right here on this line that we called our center line before. And that's the magic bikes, right? 
that's what the designers are aiming for is they're kind of looking for an even a statically even split 50 50 front and rear now that's going to change as you're riding and we can talk about that in another video we'll talk about some dynamic stuff for the bikes you know as you accelerate your weight's going to shift off that front wheel and onto the rear wheel and as you brake the weight's going to lift up off your rear wheel and go onto your front but at least statically through the corners um and if you were just to sit on your bike on a set of scales you're not going to be perfectly 50 50 but you're going to be pretty darn close i hope you learned some new stuff about bikes and if you want to learn more stuff don't forget to like and subscribe